right, we're continuing with graphing rational functions. This time we're actually going to graph a rational function. On this particular problem, we have a denominator that has x minus 3. Now, x minus 3, there's nothing for it to cancel out anything in the numerator, so it's just there. Now, that lets us know we have a vertical asymptote. So right here, I'm going to write vertical And where is our vertical asymptote located? Where x is equal to what number? 3. 3. That's right. Because if I plug in a 3 right there, what's 3 minus 3? That makes it a 0. Since it doesn't cancel out like the last problem that we did on the previous video, number 9, we don't have a hole. We just have one vertical asymptote. So right now, what I'd like you to do on your paper is make a nice vertical line at a 3. Now, if you don't notice it, we're counting up by 2. So I actually have to do my best draw a line that splits perfectly between the 2 and the 4. Let's just call it 3. Right here, that's where x is equal to a 3. So we have a vertical. Now we're about to talk about something that you have not been introduced to, and that's this concept of a horizontal asymptote. Now just trust me, I'll explain why later. But right now, just trust me, we have a horizontal asymptote where y is equal to 2. Now, you may think I'm graphing it where it says y equals 1, but you'll notice we're counting up by what? We're counting up by 2. So this right here, this is y equals 2. And everybody, that's what's referred to as a horizontal asymptote. Now, we're going to have three rules for horizontal asymptotes. And that's what you need to put in your journal right now. Right here, three rules. I'm going to write... Horizontal. If you know these three rules, you too could be able to look at problem number 12 and realize, hey, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 without having to do a whole bunch of math. But I, I, I know the rule. So here's rule number one. Okay? Let's say you have a function that's a rational function. And in the function, you have a coefficient in front of an x value that is raised to a certain power. Now, after that, let's say it just has whatever it is after. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is after, just a whole bunch of numbers after. And then in the, the denominator, you have a coefficient right in front of an x value that's raised to another power. And after it, put dot, dot, dot. It's got a whole bunch of other numbers. Now, if the scenario has the exponents equal to each other, then you can find the horizontal asymptote. So here's an example. What if I have the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 divided by, let's say, 5x squared minus 4x plus 2. Does everybody see how this exponent and this exponent, they both are what? 2. They both equal each other. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a 2. It could be a 3 and a 3, it could be a 4 and a 4, so on and so forth. So if they're equal to each other, then I'm going to write, if this is the case, but if this is the case, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals whatever the a divided by the b is. So let's look at our example. What's our a value? <coughs> 2. What's our b value? 5. So this horizontal asymptote for this example would be y equals the line 2 over 5. And that would be your horizontal asymptote. Oops, I did it again. 
Oh, uh, no, wait, nobody's going to watch this anymore. All right. So this is 2 over 5. All right. So let's go back up here. <laughs> hey. All right. What's our A value in this one? 2. What's our A value in this one? Anybody can't see it? What's 2 divided by 1? That's why I needed the horizontal asymptote <coughs> was y equals 2. Okay? Now, what's the exponent of this x value? What's the exponent? 1. And that exponent also of, so they match. Okay? So rule number 1. If your exponents are equal to each other, then take a over b, and that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. All right, let's look at rule number two, everybody. Rule number two. We'll go down here. All right, number two. All right. Now, everybody, I'm not going to rewrite everything. This, I'm just going to box in something pretty important. This right here is the basic scenario that you need to look for. Now, the first scenario was if they're equal. Here's rule number two. What if the m value is not equal to the n value, but it's actually greater than n? So let's think about a scenario where n is greater than n. Here we go, right? What if you had f of x equals 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7? Divide it by. Of 3x squared minus 4. And that was your rational function right there. Does everybody see how this right here, the m value, this is the m, is greater than the m value? If this is the case, this is really cool. Then, there is no. There is none. So, if, key thing, if m is greater than n, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Now, there might be a slant asymptote, and there actually is a slant asymptote in this one, but we don't have to worry about slant asymptotes until the next uh, year, when we have next year. All right? When we do pre calculus, we'll deal with slant asymptotes. Right now, we're just worried about vertical, horizontal, and <coughs> poles. Right now, you just need to know that there's no horizontal asymptote. Last rule, rule number three. If, what do you guys think the last rule is? If m is less than n, right? If either they're equal, or they're greater, or they're less, right? So if n is less than n, then your horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. That's what it'll be. It'll be y equals 0, which is also known as the x-axis. So it'll just be the x-axis, which is known as y equals z. So in review, it'll either be a divided by b, or there's none, or it's y equals z. Those three. All right, now that we know the three rules, I want you guys to get your graph and calculator ready, because we're going to create this exact window. Well, pretty close to being the exact window. On your graphing calculator. So go to your graphing calculator, hit y equals, we're going to clear this whole thing out, hit the window button, and I want you to have your x minimum at negative 10, your x maximum at positive 10, but since our graph on our assignment has a scale of 2, make your x scale 2. And since your y is scale 2, make your y scale 2. And if you hit graph, if you don't see grid lines, then what you can do is Put some grid lines on. So hit SETI, zoom, go over to where it says grid line, press enter, and then hit graph, and you can look at grid line. There's your grid line. So I'm going to hit zoom number six. There we go. This right here is counting up by twos 
Oh no, wait, the Y is it? Sorry. X scale to Y scale. There we go. Sorry about that. Alright, there we go. We have two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There we go. Now we are ready to go. Now hit Y equals everybody. Go alpha Y equals enter. In the numerator, let's type in a 2x plus 1. And in the denominator, type in x minus 3. And let's hit the graph button. Take a look. There's our graph. Now, something I'm going to add in right now. I'm going to add in our horizontal line. So I'm going to hit y equals. Go down here to y2. I'm going to type in a 2. Hit graph. Now, here's a way you can actually type in a vertical axis. So if some of you guys have this app, some of you don't. I'm going to go to apps. I'm going to go to number five. Now, here you may not have this inequality graphing app, but I do. All right. So right here, I'm going to scroll up to where it says x equals. Or I'm blinking right there. X equals. I'm going to press enter. And then where it says x equals one, I'm going to go down to where it says x two right here. And I'm going to type in a vertical asymptote at three. Watch it. There it is. There's my rational function. There's my horizontal. There's my vertical. We're going to create this on our paper right now. That's right. We're going to take this picture that we have in the graphing calculator and we're going to apply it to our paper. In order to do that, you need to be able to plot points. So watch what happens though. When you guys hit second graph, look at all of your points. They're in fractions. Oh, that stinks. All right. Why are they all in fractions? Because we decided when we hit y equals to put it like this. And alpha y equals, right? Come on, watch what happens. If you don't like fractions, that's okay. Watch this. I'm going to clear it out. I'm going to go open parentheses. 2x plus 1. Close parentheses. Divided by open parentheses. x minus 3. Now, when I check my table... Look what I have. I got a whole bunch of decimals that I can cross. So right now, what I want us to do, we're gonna I need you guys to write certain things down so I can recreate the tape. So right now, here we go. Follow me as best as you can. We're not gonna plot all these points. We're only gonna plot certain ones. So right now, I want you guys, right now, right now, negative four one. We're gonna plot that. Negative four one. We're plotting him. Got it? Go in there. Negative 4, 1. We're going to go down, 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 down. Ooh, 2, negative 5. Write down 2, negative 5. 2, negative 5. Don't write 3 error. That's our vertical axis. Ooh, 4, 9. Do 4, 9. Do 5. 5.5. And 10, 3. <laughs> All right. Now, to speed things up, we just took some ordered pairs that we thought we could easily plot on this graph. So we're going to start with negative 4, 1, and put a point right here at negative 4, 1. Then we're going to go all the way to 2, this is a 2, all the way down to negative 5, and negative 5 puts me right in here. Now, if we look at our graph, we realize that our graph starts really close to your horizontal asymptote, hits that, but it doesn't go straight. What does it do? It curves, right? It makes a nice curve, hits through 2, negative 5, and goes down forever. Now, I'm going to plot a 4, 9, so I'm going to go over 4, up 9, right about there. A 5, and a 5 and a half. Well, that's 4, that's 6, so 5 and a half would be somewhere in here. And then we have a what? A 10, 3, 10, 3 is going to be right about in there. And then you're going to connect the dots as best as you can, making a nice curve for your rational function. And this right here, this graph would suffice. If I saw those points on your paper, that lets me know you at least took the time and energy to make an accurate graph. What am I looking for? I'm looking for you drawing in a horizontal asymptote if it has one. I'm looking for you to draw a vertical asymptote if it has one. And if there are holes in the graph, how do you write those in? There's no holes in this graph. But if there were a hole, like right there, we want you to write it in. If there was a hole at 8, you would write a hole in at 8. But there's no hole in it. All right? Here's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see... I don't want to see this. This would be wrong. Bad. 